Oh, I don't know if yours are. Yeah, yeah, burnt one bit of the winding out. Burnt this section of the winding out only here. And the back blade's burnt off. <laughs> So the plastic blades in the front are all up, the back ones are gone. The blades flew off and burnt. Pulling things there. Hmm, didn't really get that hot. It's just smoked in the one spot, oddly enough. Even the insulation marker between the uh, stator here is not even melted yet. It actually ruptured in this corner here. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to try some other trick. Try some other method to burn it out next time. Anyway, it's pretty much done for now. Might take that shaft out and make a pin punch or something out of it. Okay, well, um. Sadie Trev wants to try this sort of trick with a ceiling fan. If you go and do this sort of thing with a ceiling fan, be very careful because if it has not got metal blades, don't bother. The ceiling fans I've got in particular are all metal construction. The hub, everything is made of steel. So it can take a bit of um, overspeeding. But if they're wood or plastic blades or something like that, forget about it. It's like it's going to fly apart and kill someone. I only attempt this mod on these metal bladed Chinese reproduction rep, uh, retro fans. If it's got plastic blades, don't do it, because a plastic blade is obviously going to be more dangerous. They can't take much abuse at all. Luckily with this one, the hub and everything is uh, aluminium, high quality aluminium. For a domestic fan, this makes it industrialised. If you're going to make it overkill, get one of those big industrial floor fans from Bunnings and you can put a one horsepower one of these motors on it. It's a half inch shaft on those. Some of them have a shaft the same size as this, some models. It's a better centimetre, 10 millimetre shaft. One of those go hard like a blade plane, blades on those big fans. Noisy, but who cares? Yeah, I'll save this for an arc up. I think I just arc it up and burn it just by arcing to it with a chicken stick. We'll finish it off later. We'll do a slow test. There's two ways you can communicate with this thing. Either via a network, snap this plastic bit out, and it's got like a no J45 um, Ethernet connector in there, or inside the top part of the circuit board here. There's little um, connections you can put onto an external controller inside here. There's a 24 volt in this one too. PLC. So, yeah. One thing I don't like about this power tram drive, you have to rip the bloody whole thing apart, virtually tear this front piece off to get this bloody terminal cover off. This is a design flaw on this drive. Very hard to get it off without warping and just pulling on this top part of the driver apart. This, yeah, it should be screwed like the Huan Yang one. Now this and the Huan Yang one are both sensorless vector control. I know um, Duro 20 asked. Um, couldn't see the questions in there, Google's. You ask a question in the comments, and it's hard to find it. But yeah, I didn't forget to answer it, so um, yeah, some questions get forgotten. Anyway, yeah, there's a, this and the fine yang I got are both sensorless vector control drives. We've got a uh, plus 24 volt PLC, there was a PLC based temperature controller, which you can get, and you can program into this to actually regulate the speed of the fan depending on the temperature outside. Which is not a bad idea, make this thing a temperature regulated fan would actually make it whole, um, actually useful. So if it's a warm day but not hot, you can have it regulate down to this speed for example. 
and if it gets to about 40 degrees Celsius plus, the PLC temperature controller will tell the driver speed the fan up. Subcooled heat pump has a video on how to do that with a um, condensing unit. And here we got there's a common here, ground, common, PLC. I just got to program some um, external buttons into this thing so I don't have to rely on these buttons on this control panel. I can mount this in an enclosure, a sealed dust proof enclosure. I have some buttons on the outside with an um, industrial potentiometer to uh, control the speed and the green and red on and stop button. Could program a reverse into this, but reverse in this would just make it suck air back and Anyway, the bloody, I think it, the problem with this is this camera, it's not the SD cards, this camera is corrupting the SD cards. So, in the video it stops abruptly and it says check card and the camera shuts off and it gets control data error has been detected. I've tried numerous cards and micro SD cards and adapters, formatted them with the camera, Just no go. After a while the camera still corrupts the cards. So. There's something wrong with the um, memory card, the SD card encoding of this camera. Either it's in the firmware or chips just starting to die. I mean, this camera's made over a thousand videos and paid for itself in bloody revenue. That's what I forgot to say. I got one of these uh, picked up, none of these uh, cords, which are, you can pick these up from scrap places or um, being thrown out at places. Get them. Because they're good for um, this sort of thing. Got another one here, ready to be terminated onto a motor. So I kept that one. No use throwing it out. It can become very useful for me motors and uh, VFDs. You're actually supposed to use a shielded cable. I think I showed it before. It's got like a clear coating on it and braiding inside. Whole idea of that, you know, if you're using it in a, in a factory and um, out in the uh, field, is that you're shielding shielded ones set mate that are meant for VFDs to actually stop arm um, interference. So I'll stop the uh, RFI interference these things can put out. I should probably um, get a little portable radio on AM and put it near this and see if I can pick any frequencies up coming from this. But yeah, this wire is alright. It's not going to um, interfere with anything else. Another control data error for this bloody camera. It's getting worse. This camera's dying. Bloody thing. It's a point four one kilowatt. And that's when it's in star on 440 to 480 volts. So 0 0.37 kilowatt, half horsepower motor. Plenty for this. Plenty for that. That'll even be good for a ceiling fan. Just gonna make up a hub adapter to go on that shaft and get it balanced and centralized. Just found another error on this thing. Adjust or inspect the inner circuits after power Dolan and discharge. Power Dolan. Yep, typical charter. Confirm the input and output DC control cables. DC control cables? Are all connected. I don't think this is DC. Pump <laughs> me in the ones on the logic and everything. Media operation manual before I adjust or inspect. <laughs> but overall, a pretty good drive. Slightly better quality than the Fine Yang, this one. They're all made in bloody shins, and there's a KEC brand, whatever it is, similar to this now being sold on eBay cheaply. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.